Caddis Maximus here this time with a Great Neck Taiwan uh, RS038. That actually makes sense, 38 for 38's Ratchet in this case. This is an older Great Neck. And one, I want to do another Great Neck video because apparently I was a little incorrect. I just assumed that they were had been bought out and were just in name only. Apparently they're still an American company, but they just buy... Uh, a bunch of rebranded stuff that's from overseas, but they have like a, a few items that are still made in the United States. So I did want to clarify that, but nonetheless, it's not the great neck saw company and, and decent tools that they really used to be. Kind of like this, and even though this is Taiwan, uh, it is pretty decent. Chrome vanadium, actually Taiwanese tools are pretty decent. The head has a little bit of play, but it's not too bad for a round head. What also kind of caught my eye, this looks real similar to that Titan that was stripped out, a uh, little quarter inch ratchet, maybe about 10 videos ago that I had reviewed. This looks exactly the same way. It kind of has this funky uh, reverse lever, which is, I guess, okay. It's pretty ergonomic. It's a quick release push button, so that acts as the push button as well. And it's pretty easy to turn. Maybe could have used a little bit heavier duty texturing. And then, of course, uh, a little extra wheel there to uh, finger spin. I had reviewed another great neck round head ratchet, which really uh, had a lot of play, and I didn't. I think I ended up getting rid of that one. But this one uh, seems a little more decent. Uh, being three eighths versus quarter inch, it is a fine tooth ratchet using twin paws. But just being once again three eighths, all the teeth and everything are just proportionally larger. And this one seems to be pretty decent. It locks on the sockets actually pretty darn good. Definitely no skips with this one. It hasn't seen that much use. Anyway, just wanted to do a little review of this because I think these are probably getting towards some of the better of any of the Great Neck branded round head ratchets. Anyway, I think we should also just take a little second, have a little look-see inside. See if we can't get this little spring out of here. Always a little bit of a challenge. Sometimes some manufacturers don't put a easy to access notch there we go I'm on the wrong side there to get these springs out some do and some do not this one it has a little angled edge so we just got to kind of push on that until we can get it out the spring does want to rotate so I'm trying to use my fingernail here to prevent it from rotating This one's a pain because it is just a straight cut edge right there, so it makes it difficult to get it out. That was super inconvenient. So what I'm saying is on <laughs> most ratchets, they use a spring where there's a little undercut on the point to a little undercut on the inside edge so that you can hook onto that and pull it out nice and easy. Not here. This is just a standard spiral spring, so a bit disappointed about that. But we can forgive them. You don't go in the ratchets on a daily basis. Anyway, one thing I was going to mention about the head is that there is a slight recess on one side and it's just a chamfer on the other. Teeth look pretty decent inside this one. Super dry. But it is quote unquote directional. And pretty simple. We got two three tooth paws. So I believe these are, many times when they do these twin paw designs, it's one paw is slightly offset from the other one in order to essentially have the teeth one is engaged and the other is engaged, effectively, effectively doubling the number of teeth. This one's kind of, and you can hear the way it sounds, this one kind of seems in between where uh, sometimes they're alternating in engagement and sometimes they're both engaging. That's kind of the other the purpose. Other purpose of them is, if you put a lot of torque on it, then one paw may start to slip a little bit, and the second one engages, giving you more strength. The weak part about these ratchets, many times besides the T slipping, is the fact that this paw is just rocking on a little pin. And I've actually seen quite a few times where that pin is actually ends up getting sheared off. So when you have two paws. It does help improve the strength. Little nice billet piece. And of course, on quick release ratchets, you can't take them apart the rest of the way. That pin, those pins are going to be held, put in through the top. And then they have the spring for the creek release. And they put this through 
drop the ball in and they switch the ball locking it in and that actually makes this a permanent assembly it can never be disassembled other than that it seems like a decent ratchet especially for a twin paul and kind of a shame that great neck doesn't actually even sell stuff like this anymore and the reason i give them criticism is i still see their tools at stores but they're just like bottom of the barrel they're all all these screwdrivers and stuff all made in china and so that's why i saw assumed the Great Neck was just a you know a Chinese company, but they're actually an American company that has uh, apparently done what they had to uh, to stay around, which is just outsourcing and rebranding a lot of stuff, and maybe having a few products which are still uh, essentially American made. But it's kind of a shame because Great Neck used to be a lot better <laughs> than they are now. Anyway. I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out. Oh, real fast before I forget, I had just put this together and thought there's got to be a way I could tighten this up a little bit. It did have a bit of play. When I take apart like cordless drills and other stuff, I always keep all the little, all the different size and crazy washers because they come in handy. This is a washer. I have no idea where it came from, but in this case. It's essentially like, it's just a touch oversized, but it's basically like made for this. Kind of surprising. So now I've got to try to finagle it over the ratchet paws. And now I have a little shim washer right there. It would be nice if this was a little wider, but it ought to provide at least a little bit of relief here. Tighten it up just a little bit. We'll see if it's just too thick it's just a little bit too tall right there it, it look we could just see that because of the slight curvature where that the billet comes out to this wheel that washer isn't actually sitting perfectly flat so it's just a little bit too thick i'm gonna try putting it on this side under the spring now i can see near perfection because due to the very thin uh, uh, side thickness it actually happens to just fit down into that recess well, after a little experimentation, it turns out that that washer is just a touch too thick. <laughs> you got to have just the right thickness. These, this double stack here is just a little too thick and binds it up. So I'm going to try my special washer with one, another one that I had from another ratchet that I cut. So it's just a single snap ring here. And we'll see how this works out for me. See, the idea is to try to get this really nice and tight but have it not bind up. There we go. I don't know if I really improved it much. I think I improved it just a little bit. It's just a little bit tighter than it was before. Now this isn't wobbling around quite so much. Always kind of the annoying thing about round head ratchets in general is uh, not a lot of them have real tight heads on it, and it's kind of what contributes to them wanting to slip so badly is because the teeth get, when you're ratcheting, the teeth get cantered back and forth. They're not sitting perfectly square. But I think I uh, gave it somewhat of an improvement here, so I'll go ahead and stick with it. <laughs>